There is an ancient journaling technique that has its roots in ancient Egypt that I've been using for the past few years and it is this technique that has allowed me to build an authentic personal brand creator business making between 5 and 10k per month which allows me to travel around doing cool shit in cool places, not having a boss, experiencing a kind of fuck you level freedom. It's really cool. Now it might sound far-fetched to you that I'm saying that this esoteric ancient journaling practice actually led to this creator business. It sounds like the kind of bullshit you'd see on like Mind Valley or something. But I promise you, and I'm going to break it down for you in this video, man. I'm not bullshitting you. I'm going to talk about what exactly this journaling practice is. I'm going to talk about why it works and why it makes you money. I'm going to actually connect the dots to direct actions that make you money. You'll be convinced, I promise you. And I'm also going to give you a truly genuinely mind-blowing profound technique at the end of the video that is going to help you apply this to yourself and you're going to experience the shifts on your own, right, if you actually apply this technique. So let's dive straight into it with no wasting any time. What is this journaling technique? This technique I'm talking about today is a technique that if I didn't apply it, if I didn't use this technique at all, if I took this out of my life over the past five years and didn't do it, I'd still be broke, depressed, I'd still be stuck working a job I don't really like, and I'd probably be an alcoholic in all likelihood. This technique is called shadow journaling. Shadow journaling is a form of transformative inner work using writing in a very deep and focused way. It's like meditation in writing form. With shadow journaling, if you're doing it properly, in an undistracted, truly ritualistic manner, you will notice the debris, the procrastination, the inner blocks, the fears, the limiting beliefs, the shit that's keeping you stuck, that's kept you stuck for years and years and years, you actually notice in real time that stuff start to shift. To give you an example, I recently gave a new client a shadow journaling exercise. It fucking blew his mind. He messaged me back saying he had like a 45 minute crying session, healing all of the stuff. And he said he feels so much lighter at the end of the exercise to the point where he was just taking action effortlessly, no problem, creating the business of his dreams by having cleared all of that stuff that was holding him back. And as a side note, man, if you think you need to know more stuff to, to create the life you want to live and to, take, and to build the thing that you want to build and become financially independent and all that stuff, if you think you need more, more knowledge, bullshit, you don't. You've already looked at YouTube videos enough, you've already read enough books, you know enough already to get the result that you want. Your biggest problem is the debris, the shit that lies under the surface in your subconscious that's holding you back. Shadow journaling takes care of that. But it doesn't just do that. I wouldn't be making this video if I thought that shadow journaling was just another form of therapy, and that's about it. Shadow journaling also makes you a fuck ton of money. If you're, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, solopreneur, creator, writer, you wanna make an online income and live a life of freedom, financial abundance and wealth. Here is, here is exactly how this technique is the most important, the hidden secret weapon that you need for that purpose. I want, to, want you to think right now of your mind as a gold mine, okay? Think of your mind as a gold mine. It's very, very, very deep. The deeper you go, the more gold you find. But your, your biggest problem so far, man, is you've been digging for gold with a hand shovel, one of those little shitty things you get from a garden center. You've been dig digging in the soil, the topsoil. Why are we not finding any fucking gold in this topsoil? Because you're not going deep enough. What you need is an industrial strength drill to, dr to drill down into the depths and find that gold. But what does that gold actually consist of in real life, in real terms? That gold consists of some fucking very valuable potential that's been lying dormant under the surface for so long untapped by you. That gold lies in the form of your unique perspectives on life. You might not feel like they're very valuable, but they really are. That gold consists of the problems that you've already solved in your life. You, I don't care if you feel like a fucking loser. You have solved problems. You're just not aware of the problems you've solved or you've downplayed them or you don't really think about it. If you were to dig up the problems that you've solved and break down that process that you've already done into a system, rebrand it, package it and sell it to other people who used to have that same problem as you, bam, you've got yourself a product that you can put to market, for example. Not only 
Does the gold consist of those things? The gold also consists of something very important that can form the basis of a highly monetizable, highly fulfilling and enjoyable personal brand that pays you for the rest of your life. And that is your unique world view. You gotta understand, man, if you're gonna be a personal brand creator and get paid a lot, you need to become a thought leader. You need to become a leader. You need to stop resisting leadership, stop feeling like a sheep, feeling like a follower, and take your place as a fucking thought leader. You can't do that if you don't have any thoughts to lead people with. Because what's gonna happen there, mate, is you're gonna compare yourself to other people because you've not found your own unique worldview. You're gonna adopt other people's worldviews, and what you're gonna end up being is some sort of cheap imitation, some sort of weird substitute of a bunch of other creators. I see it all over the fucking place now. There's so many creators, so many guys online that are basically some weird amalgamation of Iman Gadzi, Alex Hormozy, and Hamza. And I don't see any authenticity in there. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Who are you? You're just a, a mishmash of, of other men who have found their unique voice and had the balls to speak it. I don't want the same for you, man. You've got $100,000 in, in your head, as Dan Co likes to say but you just can't, you've not dug it out yet. In the assumption that you're convinced by this, shadow journaling forms the foundation of every other endeavor. So how do you actually do shadow journaling? The exercise I'm gonna give you right now, man, is gonna blow your fucking mind if you can do it. Now, the reason why I say if you can do it is because the technique itself is actually quite advanced. It's not what I would give a complete beginner, but I just wanna give you this in the hopes that some of you can apply it and it works Create some sort of internal shift so you can experience the fucking power of it, okay? So, I'm going to talk you through it step by step. And if you'll forgive me, I am going to refer to my notes on this because it's quite a deep exercise. So, first of all, let's basically shadow journaling only, only works if you have a specific problem to solve. If you're just sort of doing it in a vague way, it's not really going to work for you. But let's assume that you have the problem that you procrastinate on creating content because you're afraid, right? That's a very common problem. So just, as, just for, the, um, for the purposes of demonstration, let's say that that's the problem that we're solving in, in this exercise, okay? So you, you procrastinate on creating content out of fear. So what I want you to do first is treat this writing exercise like a meditation. Clear out all distractions, sit your ass down, maybe put on some calm ambient music on your headphones, have either just your journal in front of you with a pen, with a candle, maybe candle lit for a bit more ritualistic effect, or you can use your laptop if you want, as long as you have one tab open only. This has to be focused. You can't just be multitasking doing this exercise alongside other things. You have to access the subconscious and you have to be deep in order to do that. So that's step one. Once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to write down the fear or the problem in, in, its, in, in detail, very, being very specific, okay? So in this example, we would say, I'm afraid of creating content online. That'd be the thing that we'd start with. Once you've done that, what we're then gonna do is personify the fear, personify the problem. So in this case, what I'd like you to do is once you've written that down, I'm afraid of con creating content due to fear, I want you to also create a persona out of the fear. So let's give it an appearance, give it a shape. What does this fear look like? What does it sound like? What's the color? Give it a name, give it a shape, give it an appearance. For example, you might say, my fear of creating content looks like a shadowy figure called doubt. So now that we've got the character, it's time to open a dialogue with it. And the most powerful questions that you can lead with is asking it why it's here. You can say, doubt, why are you here? What are you trying to protect me from? And doubt might reply, if you're in this meditative space, that part of you, might, this is the spooky shit, that part of you might actually say something back to you. And you might not know where that comes from, but you've got to just trust it. That part of you might say, I'm here to protect you. I don't want us to be embarrassed. I don't want us to be judged or criticized by people. Now, this next part is essential. It's essential. 97% of people at this stage they will stay stuck in self-criticism and self-judgment for their entire lives. And that's one of the reasons why they never get past it. But what you're gonna do is something different. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna to say to that part, thank you. Thank you for being there, doubt. 
I appreciate you. Thank you for protecting me from embarrassment. Thank you for protecting me from criticism. Thank you for protecting me from judgment. I fucking love you. Thank you for being there for me. What a profound change. What a profound shift. Instead of criticizing that part of you constantly for your entire life, you're turning towards it, showing it some love and gratitude and appreciation. I guarantee you, just by doing that, man, that, that creates such a powerful, potentially powerful internal shift. But that in itself is life-changing. If you consistently do that, Jesus Christ, you will change. But we're not just going to stop there, mate. There's another stage. We are going to negotiate with that part of us and we're going to see if we can transform it. We're going to ask that part what it would take to transform you into a supportive, powerful, loving ally. You could say to, you could basically just ask immediately to that part of you, doubt, what do you need to transform into confidence? What would you need from me to transform into confidence? Listen to what doubt tells you. Doubt may then say to you, Oliver, or your name, I need us to practice more. I need... I need, for, me, for me to turn into confidence, I need us to sit down and practice every day. I need us to believe in ourselves a little bit more. I need us to be kinder to ourselves. Whatever doubt says to you, whatever that fear says to you is very personal to you, man. But it will say something. If you're in this meditative space, it will tell you something. And that's very important. It's sacred. Write that down. Because now what you need to do is you need to close your eyes, put down your pen, and you need to visualize the transformation. Imagine doubt or fear or however it comes up for you shifting into confidence. Imagine how that looks. Imagine this figure shifting into a bright, powerful, confident, world-beating version, a complete thousand percent evolution in a split second notice how this part of you when this part of you shifts into this confident part of you notice how this feels in the body notice the change the expansion the self-belief notice the the shift into total self-confidence that you actually feel and in your journal take what you visualize and make a quick sketch of it it doesn't matter if you're not artistically inclined it's just a, even if it's just a stick figure or whatever way that you can represent the the transformation represent this new figure before doubt was a shadowy figure in my example now he's like a heroic character with a sword he's got armor and he's also standing proudly and is strong that's just my example however it looks for you sketch it down because there's something that art there's something that art does that language doesn't quite do. It reaches a different part of the brain. So sketch, sketch out this new version. And the next step is very important is to make this practical by taking what doubt told you and turning it into a daily action that you are going to do. It's not good enough that you just do this cool exercise, you feel a bit better and then you carry on with your life. What we need to do here is take a piece of gold from the mine and use it in our life. For example, I am gonna practice writing every day. I am gonna write 200 words every single morning from the hours of eight to nine. That's a very tangible daily action that you can perform. If you enjoyed this and you haven't yet downloaded my 31 days of deep self-reflective journaling practice, PDF, fillable PDF, click the link in the pinned comment down below and get started on that. And mate, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.